Welcome to Above and Below, a Salt Life podcast. I'm your host, Cheyenne Bearson, and today we have new team member Lexi Davis on with us. Today we're going to be discussing the different types of catfish in Maryland and the impact they have on rockfish as well as targeting rockfish. Lexi, how's it going? Hi, Cheyenne. It is going great. I'm so happy to be a part of the team now and to be able to do this podcast. Thank you for having me on. We're so happy to have you. What have you been up to lately in Maryland? So just recently, this past month, we did a boat show, the Chesapeake Bay Boat Show, and it was super cool to be on the Salt Life team and bring that into our boat. And Brady, who is my boyfriend, is also um, on the Chartered Captain series, so our boat is Salt Life Verified as well. So it was a huge hit um, at the boat show, and to be able to bring Salt Life along with it and spread the word out. That's so awesome. That sounds like a blast. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. It was our first experience doing that. So it's definitely one that we can't wait to do more of. So it sounds like you have some good connections in the salty world. Can you give us a little bit of information about yourself? Yeah, so just this past couple of years, I've been getting really into fishing. And this was actually our first fishing season with the boat Fool's Gold. And I work on there as a first mate. I've been a first mate for a few other boats as well. But getting to do this on our own boat has been quite the dream. That is so cool. So what kind of fishing do you like to do in Maryland? Like what's your target species? How do you go about it? So our targeted species is rockfish. Um, That's the most popular here in Maryland. It's one of the bigger fish that we do get in the bay. Um, Another fish that is one of my favorites in the bay is blue catfish, and they're actually a really invasive species and causing a lot of harm to the rockfish population. So our DNR has been setting different types of regulations and really trying to get the word out to start catching these fish in hopes to also help the spawning population of the rockfish. That's crazy how a species can come in and have such an effect on a native species. Are there other types of catfish that are doing the same thing? So we have a few other types. There are channel catfish. Um, They're a little bit yellow-green color. And there are flathead catfish. They're not posing such a huge impact on the rockfish population compared to the blue cats because they are just reproducing at such a quick rate and they have been able to be in fresh water, salt water, cold, warm, they don't care. They're just repopulating and they actually feed on the spawn of rockfish. So all the little baby rockfish that can't protect themselves are getting eaten up by these big blue cats and it's really causing the rockfish population to decrease. Oh no, that's terrible. Those poor baby rockfish. I know. So have you seen a big jump in just the last few years of being out on the water in the area and noticing more and more blue cats like basically mass producing? Yes. So before our rockfish season actually starts in the middle of May, a lot of charter boats um, and we will also go catfishing up in some of the rivers, the Potomac River. Um, which is near Solomon's Island, is really good for blue cat fishing. I mean, they're just every single trip, you can catch as many as you want, any size, um, just to try to get them out of there, and they've been doing pretty well. What do you do with them? Do you just harvest them and turn them into your local um, DNR, or are you able to eat them? Yeah, so a lot of the local restaurants we have around here are actually starting to serve blue cat on the menu. Um, You can fry them, bake them. That's one of my next recipes I want to try is baked blue catfish, but some of the local restaurants are getting them in. Um, A lot of times we'll, I'll fillet them on the boat and our party that we have for that trip will be able to take their fish home and then do whatever they want with them. (laughs) That's pretty cool. So at least you can eat them and get something out of their invasiveness, I guess. Yeah, they do have some sort of a benefit that we can at least eat them and it's not just 
trying to get rid of the population for no reason. That's nice. So could you tell us a little bit about the rockfish? Because I know I actually had to Google because I'm like, I've never heard of a Maryland rockfish. And then it popped up. And for me, we call them straight bass. So what's the, the breakdown on that? Do you guys call them rockfish and um, us out-of-towners only know them as straight bass? For the most part, I think that's true. It's really a Maryland thing to call them a rockfish. I know that there's actually a fish over on the West Coast that is a rockfish, and it's like a red, prickly kind of fish. But <laughs> over here, it's really just a Maryland thing. We still have people calling them stripers or striped bass. Sometimes I do have to tell people that it is a striped bass. Um, <laughs> but no, I think it's just a Maryland thing. That's cool. I figured it probably was. I know in Florida we have different ways of saying things and people are always like, what? And then I have to like break it down yeah. because it's all a little different. So how do you target these rockfish and what's your favorite way of doing it? So my favorite way is called live lining. Uh, we'll do live lining and trolling during our fishing season. Um, live lining, we'll use a live bait. Most of the time we will catch this before taking our charter out. They're a very small bait fish called spot. They have a little spot on them. That's kind of how we determine the bait. So we'll get them and then keep them in a live well to stay alive. And we use a spinning rod combo setup, usually around 17 pound mono with a circle hook. And then all we do is just put the hook right through the back of the spot and it'll keep the spot alive. We'll have our party cast them out in the water. And once we're at like our fishing grounds, usually you'll get a bite pretty instantly. That's, it's always fun to have live action right off the bat. Are you guys inshore or offshore when you're doing this? So in the bay, we're technically inshore fishing. In the bay, there are rivers and canals that you can go into, but we're more in the body of the bay, uh, the boat can't really get up into the small, smaller areas. So we're more open bay, but it's not offshore in the ocean. That makes sense. Is there anything specific that you're looking for, like a certain current or tide or a rip edge, anything that helps you know it's a good spot? Yeah, so when we're targeting these fish, a lot of times um, it can be bridge pilings or riffraff, rocks, stuff like that, um, that you can see on the surface. Usually rockfish like to be around structure. This can also be structure in the water, like a sunken boat, um, could be a pile of rocks, tires, really anything that you could see on the fish finder that looks a little bit bumpy of an area. They're typically there, depends on the season you'll see a lot of birds working. And when you see that, there's typically a lot of bait piled up in the water and rockfish usually like that as well. Is there a certain kind of bait that they like during that time of year? It's typically spot. That's pretty much what we see most of the time and what they're trying to go after in the water. And you said that's like the beginning of season is around May? Yes, so this year we have different regulations on rockfish. So we used to have what was called a trophy season, and that was trolling for big rockfish. So now we start midway through May. Depending on the water temperature, if the spot are around, we will go live lining. If not, we will go trolling, which is artificial baits. And when you're trolling the artificial bait, is there like a certain go-to? Like do you guys use a, a big plug lure or like a hoagie or soft lure? So we'll set up about seven rods around the boat. We'll have two that are deep rods. We'll have two long lines, two intermediates, and usually one down the center of the boat. And they'll have a umbrella rig with swim baits on those. Is it pretty deep for your deep rod? Not so much. Our waters, the deepest that we usually go is about 70 feet. So it's not okay. as deep as ocean water. So we're kind of shallow, but we like to stagger them just so they don't get tangled. That makes sense. You had mentioned you use 17 pound liters. Is that what you said, or 17 pound lines? Yes. 
So it's a pretty good fight, right? Yes, just a bit. Sounds like light tackle, especially coming up from 70 feet. What are the sizes of the average rockfish that you guys are catching? So typically in the spring to summer months, our average sizes will be anywhere from 19 to 24. Those are the typical rockfish that you'll see. You'll see a lot of juveniles still swimming around that are like your 17, 18. But for the DNR regulation, we can only keep rockfish that are 19 to 24 inches this year. Um, mm. Last year, towards the fall, we'll get bigger fish, and we were able to keep from 19 to 32. And we were seeing a lot of those 28, 30, 32 inch fish. So that the average size fish is a pretty good size though, like in between like 16 to 20 pounds? Yes. A lot of these fish, they are pretty hardy, so you can also get a lot of fillets off of them as well. Oh, that's great. That sounds like a heck of a fight. Can you tell us about that? What's the excitement of reeling in that big fish on a late line, and do they fight hard? Are they kind of gentle? Yeah, so these fish aren't going to fight as much as like a marlin or a mahi, but one of the coolest things is when the rod is just sitting in the holder and it instantly just bends right over and that fish has just taken that hook. It's pretty cool to see the customers reel the fish in. A lot of times they'll be like, oh, it's a big one, and they'll get really <laughs> pumped up. And, you know, they will put on a fight. Even some of the younger fish, you might think it's big, but it's actually, you know, a juvenile, but it's still really feisty. That's so great. I love a good fight. And that sounds like the hit, the action, reeling it in and the excitement on everybody's face sounds awesome. Yeah, it's really cool when you have like five rods down at once and everybody is just like, it's kind of stressful making sure once the fish <laughs> is in, you get the bait back out, but it's a lot of fun. Oh, I couldn't imagine. So what do you do for your morning routine getting everybody ready? Like even if it's just you and your boyfriend going out to go have some fun by yourselves or if you're actually doing a charter, what is your morning routine like? Yeah, so a lot of times we like to go out early. Um, if we're doing a charter trip, our morning trips start at 6 a.m. So a lot of times I like to get to the boat about an hour early I like to get all of my mate stations set up, get the bait rods out if we're catching bait that day. And then once the party arrives, we'll get them on the boat, kind of give them a debriefing about what's going on. We're a Coast Guard certified boat, so we can take up to 40 passengers. So we have to kind of debrief and give them like a little bit of a safety explanation um, before we head out just to make sure everybody stays safe. We'll head out, catch bait, and then I'll bring the rockfish rods out and we'll take them to a fishing spot. And I like to give everybody like their own rod. And if they, it's a bigger trip and they don't get their own rod, at least taking turns. So then that way everybody has a chance to fish and they can all enjoy reeling in a rockfish. That's nice to have a rotation system going so everybody feels included. Yeah, it's really nice to have. I know a lot of people will get carried away because they'll just be sitting there and then like a rod will go down and they just run, all run up to it. So just trying to keep them organized. 40 people on the boat is crazy. How big is your boat? So it is 46 foot long and the beam is 15 and a half foot wide. It's a Chesapeake built dead rise boat. So it has a medium sized cabin, but they're known for having a big wide open deck. That's a great thing for fishing, whether you have two people or 10, because everybody can get in on it and not be on each other's toes tangling. Yeah, that's the nice part. We do like to keep our fishing trips a little bit smaller, um, anywhere from 20, because 40 people fishing would, it would stress me out. <laughs> <laughs> it's stressing me out just thinking about yeah. it. When you do a bigger trip, let's say 30, 40 people, do you often have like 10 or 15 that are like, you know what, I'm just here to watch, you know, have a, a soda and see the action? Yes, a lot of times we do have that. Even with our smaller trips, you'll get 
a group of people out there and some of them they just want to be on the boat and enjoy the beautiful atmosphere some of them are really hardcore into fishing so we get a mixed bunch and that also kind of helps because then it you know i'm able to cater a little bit more towards the fishing people that you know i need to get tackled to or bait or things like that so I bet it's a busy day on the boat with a lot of people. Yes, it is. <laughs> so when you are fishing, what's your personal favorite part about catching rockfish? I honestly just love reeling them in. Again, when you see the rod bend down and it's game on, it's so much fun. And a lot of times they'll kind of be balled up in a little herd. So you can be fishing one spot for like the whole day. That's fun. Just bailing them in. Do you have a limit on how many you can keep? Yes. So when we take a charter trip out for this year, we can only keep one fish per person. We used to be able to keep two. And for just us going out and having fun, it's still one per person. So at least you get to bring some home for dinner and eat them up. Are they delicious? Yes. They are one of my top favorites. What's your favorite way to cook them? So I love rockfish bites. It's basically just taking the filet, cutting it up into cubes, doing your egg wash and breadcrumbs and frying them up. One of our favorite ways is rocks and tots. Serve them with some nice tater tots and they're good to go. That sounds so yummy. So anything else you can share with us on any fun stories, whether it's rock fishing related or not, um, just throughout your charters and personal adventures? Yeah, we just had a group with us this past fall. We were trolling at the time because it's getting pretty cold in Maryland. And there's these two girls with us. They were probably only about like seven or eight years old and they wanted to reel in this fish so bad so they both came up to the rod and they had to take turns reeling it in because when you're reeling on a trolling rod you've got the weight of the rod the fish and the umbrella rig so it can be a little bit tough to get in and there's two baits that are like hooked at the end so you have the possibility of doubling up and they did and they were the biggest fish that we've had on a double i think one of them was 28 inches and the other one was 31 and they brought them right up to the boat and netted them brought them right in and they were just to see the look on their face it was just like awesome What an incredible experience. I bet that's a memory they will have forever. Yeah, I hope so. And hopefully when they're older, they'll come back and fish with us again. Definitely. Were they siblings or best friends? They were siblings. They were both sisters. Oh, what a good time together. Do you have any upcoming trips yourself? So right now, since it's our off season, we won't be fishing until March for catfish. So... I'll be really excited for that since catfish are one of my favorites to catch. So we'll be looking forward to that. Right now we have some boat renovations to do to get ready for the next season. That's really fun. We'll have to get you back on the podcast to hear about your blue cat adventures. For sure. Last question for you. Are there any challenges that you run into when you're rock fishing? Besides all of the things that can go wrong with gear and you know, drags and hooks and breaking line off all the time. They're a very smart fish. So we could be fishing one area for three days straight. And then on the fourth day, they are not there. And they're nowhere around where they were. (laughs) So a lot of times we'll have to go searching for them. They don't travel too far, but far enough to where it we have to chase after them. (laughs) And when that happens, are you relying on birds or just your own personal instinct to know like, okay, they could be over here or maybe they traveled this way due to pressure? Yeah, a lot of times we'll go by instinct, though they usually don't travel too far. So if we're fishing a part of the bay, we might try like some other spots that we know of. Um, Over the years, We kind of like to have our marks on different spots and we can always go back and double check there. But this fall, we've been getting lucky in the amount of bird shows that have been going on. 
you can just see like the bait right on top of the water. So those have been really cool. I bet that's fun to watch. Yeah. Well, give us a shout of your social media so we can follow along with all of your adventures and charters that you have to come and catch up with you as a person. So my Instagram is Facebook is Lex Davis 78. And if you want to follow the boat, we're at Fool's Gold Charters. Awesome. I'm going to give you a follow right after this podcast. I'm so glad we got a chance to talk and you gave us a breakdown of rock fishing and the invasive catfish species of Maryland. Yes. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thanks for being on Lexi. We'll talk to you soon. Sounds great.